This episode is brought to you by Snapple. Want to know another Snapple fact? The first hot air balloon passengers were a sheep, a duck, and a rooster. Ridiculous. Check out Snapple.com to find ridiculously flavored Snapple near you. Want to listen to this Ivory Tower Boiler Room episode ad-free? Head on over to our Patreon, where you will get this episode and all of our episodes ad-free. And you can see our video episode, including this one right now, where you'll see my beautiful face and the guest's beautiful face. Who doesn't love that? And I am so excited to announce that all of you can get a one-week free trial on our Patreon. Join the ITBR professor level and you unlock all of Mary's True Crime and Academia Patreon episodes, our rewatch show, including Queer as Folk and Smash. You can even listen to us dissect Scream and The Exorcist. And I heard, rumor has it, that we have an upcoming Britney Spears episode, a Fall of the House of Usher episode, and yes, even a Saltburn episode, which is going to be quite riveting. So head to p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com backslash ivory tower boiler room, join the one week free trial and see what you're missing out on. And while you're at it, please follow us on Instagram and TikTok at ivory tower boiler room, rate, follow and subscribe to us on Apple and Spotify podcasts. Thanks so much. And I hope that you enjoy all of our ivory tower boiler room episodes. Hey, true crime friends. Welcome back to another episode of True Crime in Academia. I am your host, Mary DePippi. Some of you can see me right now. Um, I have the video of this little first part here uploaded up on Patreon. Um, So if you're not a patron and want to become one so you can watch this video, um, you can go to patreon.com slash ivory tower boiler room and become a subscriber today. Sorry about that. I had like a cough and I didn't want to cough into the microphone and everything. Um, But yeah, so I decided to record this one. Um, I don't know why. Normally I don't just because video recording sometimes freaks me out a little bit. Maybe it's just because I am just traumatized by like the Blair Witch. So like found footage, like anything that looks like that, (laughs) it freaks me out. I'm also afraid I'm going to see something in my camera that, like, isn't there, you know, or that I don't know is there, like, something like, I don't know. That's just my anxiety. Also, I mean, I've been pretty much home this whole entire time for, like, a week now. So, sorry, I keep, like, I'm moving more to facing on my back. This stuff, like, it still really hurts. Um, So, basically, I don't know that I really got into it. So the surgery that I got um, was a hernia surgery. Um, <clears throat> it was for an umbilical hernia, meaning that it was right um, under my belly button. So because of that, they couldn't really see how big the hole, which is essentially what a hernia is, um, was. So thankfully, it wasn't so big that they would have needed to put mesh, but I have like stitches in there. So like they stitched up the muscle. Um, There was also like fatty tissue that had to be removed um, and then got sent off to be tested. Um, I really don't know what the results are yet. They haven't gotten back to me. I'm not really too concerned about it just because I've had it for this long. Um, And they seem fairly confident that it's just fat tissue. So again, not too worried about it, but um sometimes like also it's weird (laughs) because of like the stitches that are there like it feels like a wall so like when I go to breathe and like my diaphragm expands like sometimes I feel like when I hit it like 
it's hard. So it sounds like I might be out of breath, but I'm not. It's just that like because of the my the stitches in my stomach, I can't fully inflate my diaphragm. So, you know. But yeah. So, essentially that's pretty much what I had done. So, I have stitches on the muscle and then I have stitches on top. Um, the skin around the belly button um, was essentially dead because of the fatty tissue pushing through. Um, it also created like a skin tag. So they removed that. Um, and apparently I had a bunch of like skin tags underneath, like inside, um, which I thought was weird. Um, you know, but I guess, you know, that's something weird that, you know, I would do. I guess. I don't know. But, um, yeah, so they removed all that um, and then essentially gave me a new belly button. So, you know, I'm okay now. Um, like a week and a day post-op today. Um, or, sorry, a week and two days. So, you know, I'm starting to feel better. You know, I can get up. I can go downstairs and do some things, you know. But I can definitely tell that, you know, my abdomen, um, like that area is definitely more sore. Um, it gets more sore faster. So I'm just trying to be more careful, you know, because like I said, um, there are stitches there. And even though in some ways, in a lot of ways, it feels like a muscle pull, um, you know, like I said, there's stitches. So you got to be more careful. So, yeah, dealing with all that. Um, also, just like... I've been really, like, stressed out before the surgery just because, like, I mean, it's surgery. I know it's pretty basic, but, you know, still, you know, it's nerve-wracking. And I just felt like, I don't know, not that I couldn't really express it, but just that, you know, life keeps moving, so sometimes you kind of just have to keep pushing forward, but you know, it's kind of, like, caught up to me a little bit. I was having some pain in, like, my hip and lower back area, and I could immediately tell by just the way that it felt that it was due to stress and not just, like, overuse from how I was, like, getting up. Because I was essentially just, like, going into, like, the fetal position and then, like, pushing up from there to get up on the other side. So this side of me was what was hurting. And, um, but like I said, I could just tell with the type of pain that it was and the way that it felt, I was like, okay, it must've been like weak from overuse, but the stress is like being kept all in there and just making it hurt so much. Like literally like every step, even sometimes, like, when I would take a deep breath in or, like, because I just perpetually am congested, but just, like, that would, like, trigger it sometimes. And I would just have to, like, curl up in the fetal position almost or, like, just cave in on that side because it would be so painful. But I could tell, like, I was just, oh, bottling up so much stress. Um, luckily, though, it has been relieved the stress thankfully so you know I'm not in that much pain but that was also annoying but again you know I'm just trying to ease back into everything and I think not necessarily that the time that it would take because I knew they had said like I can return to normal activities within two weeks so I was like, okay. And I mean, that doesn't include lifting anything above 10 pounds. That I can't do for another four to six, uh, four to six weeks at this point. So, you know, <clears throat> but for the most part getting back. So, but even just like I said, like feeling like doing things like I made breakfast yesterday and like knowing that I was in pain and things like that, it was just, you know, it was different. And I'm not one who likes to baby themselves. So the fact that, like, I really had to baby myself and, like, have to is annoying. And, like, in its own way, like, stressful and anxiety-inducing. So, you know, 
again, just trying to take it step by step and, you know, also just realizing that this time I have to take care of myself, not only just like physically with like rest, but mentally as well. So for that reason, this episode, like the news update, it's going to be a shorter version, um, which is why I'm calling it the headlines, because I really don't didn't do as much research as I normally would. I kind of just read through like maybe one or two sources per story, and that was it. Um, so yeah, we're just going to call it the headlines, I guess. And then we're going to get into this episode after that. But like I said... Let's get into the headlines. I just need to take a moment to readjust. So the first story is actually one that we had already covered. It was actually the um, NHL uh, Canada hockey uh, scandal, sex scandal that had occurred. Or I'm sorry, I shouldn't even call it a sex scandal. It was a sexual assault. Sorry, my closet's open. <laughs> should have shut that oh well anyway so it came out they had a press release the police um on the 5th and they basically just reiterated that the certain hockey players the ones that I had listed in last week's episode um they've been charged with sexual assault one of the members, uh, Mike McLeod, he is on the New Jersey Devils, I believe. He is actually being charged twice or with two counts of sexual assault. It seems that he had more of a prominent part or at least didn't do anything really to intervene. It was kind of tricky with the way that they worded it. Like I said, I kind of just read through it like once the source. So... <laughs> um, I don't, I'm not fully versed, but this is just a quick update that what's going on. Basically, they're reopening it because the public is pretty pissed that this happened. So it's great. You know, I think that they are looking into this. Hockey pretty much keeps all of these scandals and stories very, like, close to the chest. And you really don't hear too much about them. Like, for this update, I had to actually really search it. Like, it did wasn't just something that was popping up. You had to really look for it. So, you know, I'm glad that this is, like I said, out in the open. People are aware. And it looks like the next court date is going to be in 2025. So, it's going to be a while before we have an update. But... You know, it's sad, but again, I'm glad that some sort of justice is coming through in this case. Now, because we can't have nice things in this country, of course, sadly, I'm sure you've all heard about the horrific shooting that occurred at the Kansas City Chiefs Super Bowl win parade. Um, Sadly, one person was murdered, killed in this shooting and many more have been injured i know i just saw something recently that taylor swift has um given the family a hundred thousand dollars um and is just like really sorry for their loss obviously and you know another development that's come from that that i've seen is that two juveniles have been arrested for this so You know, because they're under the age of 18, we're not going to know how old they are or what their names are. So, you know, it's frustrating in the fact that, like, you know, obviously we're not going to know the identities. But it's like, I mean, we might at some point, but not for a while. But even still, like, it's more frustrating that, like, someone that young did this. Like... What the fuck? I hate this. So, I mean, one of them, it said one of them was let go, but, and apparently had nothing to do with it. Um, It seems like it was more of a personal motive, but it's like, you shot and killed so many kids for what? For what? Like, your personal, (sighs) and again, it's probably because they're young children, And I'll say children because, you know, even though 
they say at 18 you're considered an adult. You know, your brain's not fully formed until you're like 25. So to me, that's still child. But in this case, you know, it's teenager, maybe not an actual child, but still. <sighs> For a teenager to even just like think that their personal problems are so much more important that they need to put all these other innocent people, specifically children, because a lot of children, I think at least nine children, have been injured so far because of these assholes. You know, like... (sighs) It's frustrating. We need to do better, like, as a country. And I say we, like, as if we can really do something, but it's really, like... The lawmakers need to do better with this shit. Because this is exclusively an America-only problem. And it's just, it is so fucked up. All right, so for these last two stories, hold on, I have to find my phone. Here it is. Because I took screenshots of pictures that I saw of these stories that I wanted to talk about. Oh, so this next one. I get, conservatorship has been in the news, like... Insane. So, Brian Wilson, co-founder of the Beach Boys, he is apparently suffering from a major neurocognitive disorder, such as dementia, in quotes. Um, So, I mean, he is 81 years old, and it seems like his family has filed for this conservatorship because his wife had recently died. So... I mean, I can understand that as someone who has seen multiple family members, sadly, suffer from Alzheimer's and dementia. I know that such traumatic events like that can either not only spur on Alzheimer's and dementia because of the trauma, or it can make that even worse. So, unlike some of the other conservator situations that we've been hearing that are kind of just bullshit. This is actually legit and what it is for. So, you know, I just hope, you know, him and his family are, you know, okay. And, you know, that's a really hard decision to have to make. It's not something that you take lightly. And, you know, like I said, it's just a very tricky thing in general that disease so like I said this is the only time you would actually really want to use a conservatorship to protect him and his finances and lastly just because this is kind of exciting um it seems like Donald Trump has to pay 355 million dollars for some sort of fraud Or it says, doing business in New York as penalty for fraud. Well, I don't know. Either way, make him go broke, throw him in jail. Actually, I've been seeing a lot that's saying that he might be going to jail for a very long time. But we will see. I'm I'm seeing other things that his next court date isn't going to be until March. So, who knows? You know, we'll see what happens. But it would be cool if they'd lock him up just saying (laughs) so anyway that is all i have in the headlines for you we are going to take a quick break and then we are going to get into this week's episode are you a fan of lgbtq plus books plays movies tv shows well then i have the magazine for you it's called the gay and lesbian review The GNLR is a bi-monthly magazine of history, culture, and politics that publishes essays in a wide range of disciplines, as well as a slew of reviews of books, plays, and movies. Each issue brings you consistently intelligent, lively, thought-provoking articles focused on a unifying theme, and it brings together the leading minds on the topic. So I just had on Dr. Richard Schneider Jr., the founder and editor-in-chief of the GNLR, for the GNLR's 30th anniversary. Happy birthday, GNLR. Dr. Richard Schneider talked about their special volume called Outer Appearances, More Faces from the Annals of the GNLR, illustrations by Charles Heffling. They cover current LGBTQ artists such as Harvey Firestein, Melissa Etheridge, Alan Cumming, James Whiteside, Alison Bechdel, and even David Sedaris. And of course, 
many others like Stephen Soundheim. There's even a supplemental issue that comes with your commemorative volume. And Andrew Halloran, the writer of Dancer from the Dance, he reviews a book called Morris about E.M. Farster's Morris, written by one of our ITBR guests, David Grevin. So we can't wait for you all to experience this beautiful 30th anniversary GNLR issue. Have you heard some of my GNLR interviews, including Dr. Andrew Lear's discussion about male male love in ancient Greek society and Ignacio Darnad opening and blasting the closet door in the queer male art world? Well, definitely make sure you listen to them after this episode. Head to glreview.org. Make sure you subscribe to their magazine. You'll see there's a section that says subscribe at the top. Enter the promo code ITBR50. That's ITBR50 to receive 50% off, 50% off any print or digital subscription. Enjoy your reading. LGBT stories are universal, but each one speaks to the individual heart and soul of the writer telling it. Do you have a story to tell? Or have you been moved by an LGBT book, film, painting, television show, or other form of media? Then the Gay and Lesbian Review wants to hear from you. The GNLR believes in bringing awareness to queer art and artists through reviews, commentary, and thought pieces in which the author relates their personal lives to a particular piece of art, a novel, a movie. In addition to the print magazine, the GNLR also publishes articles on its blog. So you can see all of this on glreview.org. That's G-L-R-E-V-I-E-W.org. Remember, you get 50% off your subscription of the GL Review magazine when you use the promo code ITBR50. That's 50% off your print or digital subscription when you use promo code ITBR50. To learn more about submitting an article for the GNLR, Visit their writer's guidelines. The link is located at the bottom of their homepage. And if you have any questions, email Stephen Hemrick. That's S-T-E-P-H-E-N dot H-E-M-R-I-C-K at glreview.org. The GNLR and its readers can't wait to see what you have to say. Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Rimby, and I'm really excited to talk to you all about one of our ITBR sponsors, Broadview Press. Broadview Press is an independent academic publisher in the humanities that produces high quality, pedagogically useful books for use in university and college classrooms. They publish mainly in English studies, writing, philosophy, and history. They are always publishing with an eye towards diversity, building a strong list of titles from women, people of color, and authors from other marginalized groups. If you haven't heard my Broadview Press interviews, you need to. Recently, I just had on Dr. Shannon Day, who talked about her book, Beyond the Binary, Thinking About Sex and Gender. And in the summer, I had on Dr. Jason Holt, who gave us all a comprehensive history of what it means to be a philosopher who studies sporting culture. And of course, we went back to ancient Greek, literature, mythology, history, to look at the roots of athleticism. And... Last year, I had on Dr. Jeffrey Andrew Weinstock, who's actually going to be coming on the podcast soon to give his thoughts on the new Fall of the House of Usher Netflix series. He talked all about pop culture for beginners. And Broadview Press is offering an exclusive discount because of our sponsorship. So head to broadviewpress.com where you're going to see such a wide range of literature. Use the code Ivory Tower, I V O R Y. T-O-W-E-R for 20% off site-wide all of their books. Again, it's broadviewpress.com. Enjoy your reading. So this case I've kind of been sitting on for a while now. I came across it back in the beginning like of the podcast's life when I was compiling cases together. And I had almost done it a few times, but would always wind up switching gears and choose a different case. And just with like everything going on in my life and things like that, I feel like it's just really important to talk about right now. 
if nothing more than just to serve as a reminder to take care of your mental health and allow yourself to take time to take care of your mental health. So without any further ado, let's get into the tragic death of Lucas Upanuja. On February 22nd, 2022, University of Portsmouth student Lucas Upanuja left his home in Southgate, London at around 4 p.m. to visit the shops in Enfield via a bus. Sadly, this would be the last time his loved ones would see him alive. His body would be found nine days later. Lucas Upanuja was in his third year at the University of Portsmouth studying mechanical engineering. He was enrolled in a four-year program that also included a master's, Basically, it seems like it was an accelerated program. Lucas was clearly smart and determined. He had a passion for Formula One or F1 racing and had dreams of becoming a race car driver himself. I don't know if his parents made him do this or if he thought of this himself, but his plan was to get a degree in mechanical engineering and then get a job working for Formula One, essentially as a mechanical engineer and then work his way into becoming a driver. I think that is fucking genius. Not only do you have the opportunity to pursue your dreams, you get to learn about the business from a completely different side of it, really network the shit out of yourself, and get yourself closer than like really anyone just coming in trying to be a driver. I'm assuming anyway, I'm not really sure. But all of that while having a degree that can make you a decent living if this doesn't pan out. Again, fucking genius. So you all know that I am such a fan of musical theater and classic movies. So I can't wait for you all to listen to One of my good friends' podcasts, it's called That Old Gay Classic Cinema, hosted by Christian Garcia. It's a podcast that looks at classic cinema films that we know and love. And he was inspired by Turner Classic Movies and The Great Movie Ride. Remember that amazing ride where the Wicked Witch of the West rose up in a burst of flame in Disney? That was one of my favorite rides. I'm so sad it closed. So... While looking at classic films, Christian is so excited to look at it with a queer lens, and he brings on friends like myself to talk about all of these films. I was on the first episode when we discussed The Sound of Music. I've been on an episode of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo. He just released an episode about the Philadelphia story. He's done Meet Me in St. Louis, Sweet Charity, Psycho, Mary Poppins, Hello, Dolly, He had on Down the Yellow Brick Road hosts and the Garland Gab hosts to talk about The Wizard of Oz. So make sure that you listen to That Old Gay Classic Cinema on Apple and Spotify and follow him on TikTok and Instagram at That Old Gay Classic Cinema. Okay, start watching the classic movies and make sure you listen to Christian's podcast. The holiday season may be behind us, but guess what's lurking around the corner? Picture that little baby with a bow and arrow. Yes, Valentine's Day is almost here. And I'm thinking of what gift can I get that my boyfriend will absolutely love and gush over? Well, he is a horror movie fanatic, so I think I have just the thing that he'll die for. Pun intended. My good friend Mandy Bangle is the owner of Mandy Made It, a craft company where she specializes in crochet and pre-cut handmade gifts. So whether your partner is a horror movie fanatic, I'm sure that they have a TV show they love. Maybe there's a book that they love, a music artist, a sports team that they cheer for. Mandy has you covered from shirts, hats, Beanie hats, which I love to wear at the gym, car decals, beer and coffee koozies, keychains, stuffed animals, signs that you want to put all over your apartment. She is ready to 
create any customized order. So head to Instagram right now, type in at Mandy made it. That's M A N D E E made it slide into her DMS and she is ready to start working on your order. Just send her a few ideas. You could say, Hey, my boyfriend really loves horror movies or Hey, my boyfriend really loves the Broadway musical wicked. I'm sure she will figure out some concoction for you and say that you heard her ad on the ivory tower boiler room because she's going to give you an exclusive ITBR free gift. She's also working on a new line of ITBR merchandise. So I can't wait to share all of that information with you. Make sure you mention at ivory tower boiler room when your gift arrives from Mandy. So I can share it out on our Instagram. I hope you all enjoy your gifts. Hi, this is Dr. Andrew Rimby, and when I'm not here on the podcast, I am consulting with small businesses, undergraduate students, graduate students, podcasters, and those in media. So if you're curious about the work that I've done with my consultation services, you could just type me in on Google, Ivory Tower Boiler Room, and you'll see a few reviews pop up. I've worked on college admission essays for undergraduate students. I've revamped and expanded a small business's social media marketing campaign right here in Port Jefferson, New York. And I've also worked on a graduate student's thesis for her physician assistant program. So if you want to seek me out or inquire about my consultation services, just email me. That's the easiest way to reach me at ivorytowerboilerroom at gmail.com. That's easy to remember. And tis the season for college admission essays, both undergraduate and graduate, thesis writing, dissertation writing. Um, do you want to create a podcast and you don't know where to begin? Media work, um, how to open a TikTok, how to start creating videos on TikTok, what to do with your Instagram. All of that I have done. So just reach out to me. I am here in Port Jefferson, New York on Long Island in one of my favorite stores. It is the Soapbox NY, a Bath and Body Boutique. I'm here with one of the co-owners, Janine. Hi, Janine. Hi, Andrew. How are you? Thank you. Good. So I know you have many winter scents to walk us through. So let's yes. get started. This is from company Michelle Design Works, another one of our favorites. Room spray that you can use any room in your house, just kind of freshens up the room a bit. And what is this by Michelle Design Also Works? by Michelle Design Works is Winter Blooms, one of their new scents this holiday season. It's great. It's um, a hand wash. You can use it in your kitchen or your bathroom. And then here is something to follow it up with. Exactly. It's a hand and body lotion. And then what is this beautiful decorative candle here? One of our favorites that we actually sell mm. all year round because it's so popular. This is the scent of Fraser Fur by Times. I think I'm becoming addicted to it. Yes. I think you are because you already own one, I believe. I own one and it is a decorative handle for me because I'm about to open it, but it's just in such I know the a beautiful is, package. I don't know what's better, the packaging or the scents. I'm using it wonderful. as a holiday decoration. So cool. I'll get to the candle eventually, yes, everyone. Well, but it's wonderful because with Times and their Fraser fur, not only do they carry the candles, but they also make it in the scents in the diffuser, in soap, the hand lotion, the um, the hand soap. It's just a great line and a great scent. So, Janine, how can everyone out there get their hands on your hand and body and even pajama products? Well, we'd be more than happy to see you in our shop. We're located at 18 Chandler Square in Port Jefferson Village. You could always call us to place an order. We're happy to ship to you. Our phone number is 631-509-1424. You can place an order on our website, soapboxny.com. And you could also find us on Instagram or TikTok at the Soapbox NY. So many options. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for all of you out there to just enjoy what I love so much about the Soapbox NY. So with yeah, that, thank you so much. Happy winter, everyone. Unfortunately, Lucas had to be a college student during COVID quarantine, which I can't even imagine how isolating that must have been. I know at that time in my life, I was extremely social and just needed human interaction. And I feel like that's how it is for a lot of people. 
at that stage in life in particular. Unfortunately, isolation, the pandemic, and being just a college student in an accelerated program was extremely difficult on Lucas. Now, the UK has something called data protection laws. From my understanding, it kind of seems like they're similar to privacy laws. So because of these, Lucas's parents, Larissa and Ada Tola, they were not informed to the extent of their son's mental health issues and struggles. It was said that Lucas had had a referral to a doctor and a 40-minute televisit before returning home on February 8, 2022. Now, according to a friend of Lucas's father, he was aware that his son needed to see like a psychologist or that type of doctor, and he was very hopeful about his son's recovery. There didn't seem to be any real strong indicators that Lucas was going to do something as drastic as take his own life. Of course, when Lucas didn't return home, his parents reported him missing. Police searched on foot and by helicopter in the areas where Lucas was last seen. Lucas's parents also appealed to Lucas through the media, saying, quote, Wherever you are, Lucas, we love you so much and we want you to be safe. We really want to help you and we miss you so much. End quote. During the morning of March 3rd, at around 9.42 a.m., police confirmed that officers searching in Woodland in Waltham Abbey found the body of a young man matching Lucas's description. The coroner confirmed that the body belonged to Lucas and that the manner of death was ruled a suicide. It was concluded that mental illness and distress due to the pandemic and isolation were triggers that strongly influenced his decision to end his life. At the memorial service at the University of Portsmouth, everyone expressed their fond memories of Lucas. Lucas was described as kind, gentle, likable guy. No one had a single bad thing to say about him. Students gathered and released Chinese lanterns one night, and on another night, they placed handwritten notes written to Lucas under stones so that they could be washed away at sea. It also seems from my research that Lucas's case is being used in conjunction with a, another tragic student death in a way to help reform stu- certain laws in schools to help basically make sure that they're being checked in more as far as their mental health is concerned and putting that responsibility into the university's hands more so than the parents or the students. So hopefully something more will be done, you know, with that. Like I said, they're working to really push for those changes, and I really hope that they can, you know, act on them. All right, that is all I have for you this week, my loves. Take care of yourselves, you know, make sure you are getting all of the mental rest that you need, you know, pay attention to your social battery and when you need to, you know, take the time to really recharge that and do what you got to do, you know, and also for your physical health, make sure you're listening to your bodies and knowing when something's wrong and, you know, make sure you get those things looked at, all right? Don't forget to follow True Crime and Academia on social media at True Crime and Academia on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads, and at TC and Academia on X slash Twitter. If you would like to watch the beginning part of this episode, which I already talked about, go to patreon.com slash ivory tower boiler room and become a subscriber today so you can watch that. And then you'll have access to all the bonus episodes. And all of the regular episodes ad-free. All right, my loves. Until next time, stay safe. And I'll see you all later.